Hey Optimancers, Chris here. So the first thing I want to mention is, I'm not joking. I really am starting to wonder if a monk should just be wearing armor. Uh, and I know that the common perception is monks can't wear armor, except they can. Uh, I mean, they're not proficient. They would need to get proficiency somewhere else. But you might be surprised how little a monk gives up by putting armor on, because I certainly was. If you'd like to support me through Patreon, there is a link in the video description. And today I'd like to thank these top-level patrons. Airhead, Alex Aquendo Vang, Alexander Baldwin, Alex R, Rob Reichelt, Awesome Face, Barbar, Ben Potts, Benjamin, Bloody Nine, Brett McDowell, Atherazone, CJ, Chris Coons, Christian Windham, Unknown Watcher, Kalinta, Daniel Sturgeon, Dank Train, Dash Panther, Dave Peters, David Edgar, David F., David Lotz and David W. Skibbins, thank you all so much for your support. Let's get started. I worked on a couple builds recently that involved Monk. I was trying to make longsword work on characters, and Monk was one of the options I kind of worked on. Didn't work out, but uh, one thing I noted was that uh, if you multi-class with fighter, you suddenly have heavy armor proficiency, and you're not really using it. Uh, and I did an archery build recently that involved monk, and uh, again, it, it had fighter as a dip, and had heavy armor proficiency, and wasn't using it. And I've always been disappointed with unarmored defense. I think it just doesn't give you enough. Uh, and then... If we had this armor proficiency and we just put on the armor and ignored unarmored defense, where would we be? Uh, because, you know, one thing that doesn't work is a strength-based monk. So let's say we make a monk and we, you know, focus on strength. Well, suddenly we can't focus on dexterity anymore. And if we can't focus on dexterity, then our unarmored defense is going to be terrible. So this character here would have a 13 armor class you can't go into melee with a 13 armor class you will die very very quickly but again what if we were to get armor proficiency and just put on armor well then our armor class would be higher but would we still get the monk stuff and to that yeah we actually get most of it couple things we don't get but we get most monk stuff even in full plate so let's just pretend for a moment that we did want to make a strength-based monk, then what would we want to do? Well, probably we would want to dip another class to get the armor proficiency in the first place. Here's the thing about armor proficiency. Anyone can put on a suit of armor or strap a shield to an arm. Only those proficient in the armor's use know how to wear it effectively, however. Your class gives you proficiency with certain types of armor. If you wear armor that you lack proficiency with, you have disadvantage on any ability check, saving throw, or attack roll that involves strength or dexterity and you can't cast spells. Uh, so this basically is a non-starter. If we don't have the armor proficiency, we don't want to wear armor. But we can get armor proficiency really easily. A single level dip in fighter gives us all the armor proficiencies. Single level dip in cleric can give us every armor proficiency, depending on the domain we choose, but there's lots of domains where we would get heavy armor proficiency. I should probably add that uh, if we were going to use fighter, we would need to take it at level one in order to get the heavy armor proficiency. Otherwise, it only gives you medium armor proficiency. So let's say we dip another class and we get the armor proficiency. Well, how are we doing then? So we're a monk, we have a high strength, and we put on full plate. What do we want to do? Well, I would say the first thing I'd want to do is probably, if I'm going to play a strength-based character, let's ignore everything about the monk. Uh, because we're also supposed to use monk weapons, right? So we can't use a maul and be a monk. Well, we can use a maul and be a monk. So let's say I take my full plate, I take a maul, I take great weapon master. Where am I left if I'm a monk? Let's take a look. First off, obviously, we wouldn't be using unarmored defense. We're wearing full plate. Then we have martial arts. This is like one of the first things listed under the monk. And it says, you gain the following benefits while you are unarmed or wielding only monk weapons and you aren't wearing armor or wielding a shield. So we do not get martial arts if we are wearing armor. And I think this is where most people stop, right? Oh, we don't get martial arts. If we're wearing armor, I guess we can't wear armor. 
But the thing is, is martial arts might not cover as much as you think it does. It allows you to use dexterity instead of strength for the attack and damage rolls of your unarmed strikes and monk weapons. Well, if we're a strength-based character, I want to use strength. So that's not a problem. You can roll a d4 in the place of normal damage of your unarmed strike or monk weapon. This die changes as you gain monk levels, as shown in the martial arts column of the monk table. Well, let's take a look at that martial arts die for a second. So it says we get a d4, and that happens at level 1, or a d6 at level 5, or a d8 at level 11, or a d10 at level 17. Well, if I'm wielding a maul, I'm doing 2d6 damage. That's higher than a d10. So the martial arts die is lower for all 20 levels than my existing weapon damage. So it's no benefit at all for using a maul. Now, one thing it does affect is my unarmed strike. Because you know how much an unarmed strike does if you don't have the d4? It does one point plus your strength modifier. Now, we can get that up. For example, let's say we got our armor proficiency by dipping fighter. So we dip fighter and we got our armor proficiency you know what else we get? A fighting style. So we could take unarmed fighting. Your unarmed strikes can deal bludgeoning damage equal to a d6 plus your strength modifier on a hit. Well, I'm looking at these martial arts die, and we don't have above a d6 until level 11. And then it doesn't go that much more. I mean, it goes to a d8 and d10 at level 17. But you know what? If I had a d6 for all 20 levels, that's not much worse than the martial arts die. In fact, it might be better overall in most campaigns because most of these campaigns don't get to these super high levels, but they certainly have those lower levels. So yeah, that might actually be just as good. And then the final bullet point says, when you use the attack action with an unarmed strike or a monk weapon on your turn, you can make one unarmed strike as a bonus action. For example, if you take the attack action and attack with a quarterstaff, you can also make an unarmed strike as a bonus action, assuming you haven't already taken a bonus action this turn. This one hurts a bit. Uh, like, let's be honest, we lose our martial arts attack. But, you know what? Any monk who does flurry of blows, or patient defense, or, you know, a shadow monk doing a shadow step, none of them are using this feature when those things happen. <laughs> there are a number of things we can do with our bonus action that don't involve this. The question is, can we do those in armor? And the answer is, yeah, we can do them all. Let's go through it. Because there's only one other thing that's affected by us wearing armor, and that's unarmored movement. So normally, a monk at second level, their speed increases by 10 feet, and then it goes up from there. And if we are wearing armor, then we don't get this feature. So a full plate monk with a maul, is moving at their normal movement speed. But now let's talk about what you do get, because I think there's some real benefits to not restricting yourself to the monk weapons and to not restricting yourself to no armor. Key, all right, so we still get key just the same. There is nothing in this entire block here that says a thing about wearing armor. So you can wear armor, you can hit with your maul, and then you can spend a key point and do flurry of blows with the bonus action. You can do that. It's completely legal. Or patient defense or step of the wind. All these are just fine. And we have just as much key as any other monk. Deflect missiles. If we want to use our reaction to deflect a missile, we can still do so if we're in armor. I will say that the damage we deflect is slightly lower because it's based on our dexterity modifier, not our strength modifier or proficiency bonus or anything else. So we would have less than the standard monk so, you know, we would deflect a little bit less damage. You know, deflect missiles as a reaction is still a decent way to go when it's applicable. Now, if we spend the key point to throw the missile back, which I normally consider a pretty bad option, we should note that it would be treated as a monk weapon. And with our monk weapons, we would not use the martial arts die. So how much damage it would do is actually questionable. I don't know how much damage it would do. But again, that's not usually what I would be doing with my key points anyways. Obviously, ability score improvements are unaffected, except for the fact that I'd be taking feats that no normal monk would ever take. Slow fall. This is one I thought for sure would be affected by armor. Nope. Nothing about armor. We benefit from slow fall exactly the same. Extra attack, fortunately, not affected by wearing armor. Here's one that blew me away. Stunning strike. Surely must require you use a monk weapon. Nope. 
Starting at 5th level, you can interfere with the flow of key in an opponent's body. When you hit another creature with a melee weapon attack, doesn't say anything about monk weapon, you can spend one key point to attempt a stunning strike. They succeed on a constitution saving throw or they're stunned. And that means we could have a maul hit somebody with great weapon master and apply a stunning strike. <laughs> we can do that. That's actually really good. Let's move on. Key empowered strikes. So our unarmed strikes still count as magical as per normal. Has nothing to do with wearing armor. This one surprised me. Evasion doesn't say anything about wearing armor. So we can be in full plate and benefit from evasion. Stillness of mind, no surprise, it's unaffected by you wearing armor. Purity of body, no surprise, it's unaffected by you wearing armor. Tongue of the sun and moon, no surprise, doesn't care if you wear armor. Diamond soul, doesn't care if you wear armor. Diamond soul might be the best feature monk gets. They get it really, really late, but it is a really strong feature and unaffected by us wearing armor. Timeless body, unaffected by us wearing armor. Empty body, unaffected by us wearing armor. And by the way, empty body, let's say we were using a plate mail melee monk with great weapon master. The invisibility for one minute could be really, really good. I mean, it's advantage on all attacks. And if we're in melee, we're worried about defense. And this would give disadvantage to being attacked and resistance to all the damage. So yeah, not so bad. Now, perfect self sucks. Uh, and it says nothing about wearing armor, though if we were to multi-class to get armor proficiency, we wouldn't get it, and who cares, because it's terrible. Now let's also talk about the optional class features. Okay, so dedicated weapon, not going to work for us, because, I mean, we can use dedicated weapon, it doesn't say anything about not being able to use it when you're wearing armor, but turning something into a monk weapon is kind of pointless when we're not getting any of the benefits of a monk weapon. And key-fueled attack. This is affected a little bit. If you spend one key point or more as part of your action on your turn, you can make one attack with an unarmed strike or a monk weapon as a bonus action before the end of your turn. Uh, and um, again, we, we aren't really benefiting from monk weapons, uh, and we're probably not using a monk weapon. So it basically limits us to using an unarmed strike. But, uh, you know, essentially what happens then is if we ever spend key on our turn, then we can make the unarmed strike that normally we wouldn't be able to make because of no martial arts. Quick and healing isn't very good, but it works the same in armor. And focused aim, this one shocked me as well. Focused aim must require you use a monk weapon, right? Nope. When you miss with an attack roll, an attack roll can be any attack. You can spend one to three key points to increase your attack roll by two for each of the key points spent, potentially turning the miss into a hit. So yeah, we could do this with Great Weapon Master and a Maul. And yeah, it's perfectly legal. I just would never have guessed it. So now let's talk about subclasses because we can see that, you know, 90% of the monk features seem to be just fine when you're wearing armor. What about subclasses? But the short of it is none of the subclass features, and I do mean none of them, say they don't work if you are wearing armor. Now, one thing some subclass features do is they reference the martial arts die of your character. And I would assume, wearing armor, we still have a martial arts die. We just can't apply it to our monk weapons and unarmed strikes, but we still have the levels in monk, and the martial arts die is listed right there with your levels of monk. So my assumption is, if you are an 11th level monk, your martial arts die is equal to a d8. It just is that... If you can't use martial arts, then you can't apply that martial arts die to your unarmed strikes or your monk weapons. But there's lots of subclass features that do use the martial arts die. I would assume they would work exactly the same. Now, Way of Mercy, I think, is the best monk subclass. Uh, so I was curious how it would be affected if we wore full plate and, like, used them all. Uh, and it's affected a little bit. I will say it's not as good on that kind of character as it is on a standard monk. Uh, and the reason is, is because Hand of Healing and Hand of Harm both require you make an unarmed strike. And we would be making less unarmed strikes. We wouldn't get that free bonus action unarmed strike on our turn. We'd have to use something like Flurry of Blows or use it as part of our attack action. Though, once we got to 11th level, then we can use Flurry of Blows in concert with our Hands of Healing and Hands of Harm. And so then we would be doing flurry blows anyways. 
So at that point, it wouldn't really be a disadvantage at all. But at lower levels, doing that unarmed strike might be a bit of a problem. I guess what I would probably do is, like I would attack with my maul, I would apply a stunning strike with a key point, and then I get that bonus action attack, and obviously that's going to have to be an unarmed strike, and then I could apply hands of harm, but that's going to require a total of two key points. But in order to apply that hand of harm, which can automatically apply the poison condition at level six, it's going to require me two key points to do that when normally we could potentially do it with one key point. Otherwise, I'm giving up attack actions. Another one I was interested in was Way of the Kensai. Uh, so let's say we had our maul wielding monk and we're Way of the Kensai. What happens? Well, first off, you can't make it a Kensai weapon. It doesn't qualify. And if it's not a Kensai weapon, well, then it's not going to work with one with a blade. And it's not going to work with sharpen the blade. And it's not going to work with unerring accuracy. Now, we could potentially make an armored you know, Kensai character, but we would have to use a weapon that qualifies for being a Kensai weapon. And turning it into a Kensai weapon, and therefore a monk weapon, doesn't give us the standard advantages that monk weapons give us, but we would be able to apply our subclass features. Uh, so it could be done, but it just doesn't work all that great. You might think open hand is obviously not going to work, but actually it works just fine. Uh, because open hand technique requires we use flurry of blows, we can still use Flurry of Blows, and we're probably going to be just about as good at it. So we can still use Open Hand Technique, no problem. Wholeness of Body, Tranquility, Quivering Palm, they all work fine. I was a bit surprised, but Four Elements Monk also works just fine. None of it is affected by us using them all and wearing heavy armor. So if you wanted to have some spells, that's the way you could go. Four Elements, I think, is pretty weak as a subclass, so uh, I wouldn't go that way. But... If you want to, it could work. Long Death. Uh, so Long Death, Touch of Death, one of the problems with it, it's a good feature. The problem is that when you are a monk and you're, you know, punching with D4s and hitting with your monk weapon and it's like a D6, we just don't take that many creatures down to zero hit points. But if we're using a maul and we're applying plus 10 from Great Weapon Master, we would expect to start getting creatures down to zero hit points a lot more often. Which means Touch of Death would actually be better on that maul using armored monk than it is on a standard monk. And that's kind of interesting. And Hour of Reaping works the same, Mastery of Death works the same, Touch of Long Death works the same. But here's the one that I thought was super interesting. So the Shadow Monk, I'd say, overall is kind of middle of the road as far as monks go for the standard monk. Uh, but there's a couple features here that I think look a lot better as soon as we put on full plate and bu build a strength-based maul using character. Uh, the first is Pass Without Trace. So normally, a monk has good dexterity. They are not wearing armor, so they have no disadvantage on stealth checks, and they're proficient in stealth. So most of the time, they would roll stealth, they're going to succeed on the stealth check. Uh, but if you are wearing full plate and you don't have a high dexterity, and even if you are proficient in stealth, you're probably going to fail those checks, unless you got something like Pass Without Trace. So we might actually benefit more from Pass Without Trace than the standard monk would. But the feature I think really looks interesting is Shadow Step. So at 6th level, you gain the ability to step from one shadow to another. When you are in dim light or darkness, as a bonus action. You can teleport up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space you can see that is also in dim light or darkness. You then have advantage on the first melee attack you make before the end of the turn. So, first thing, the first melee attack says nothing about it being a monk weapon. So it would work with our maul and great weapon master, and that is going to benefit more from advantage than a standard monk attack. Second thing is, the 60-foot teleport as a bonus action isn't really a problem when we don't have the standard unarmed strike as a bonus action. And if we can add 60 feet to our movement on our turn, then losing that monk speed isn't that big a deal. So yeah, Way of Shadow looks really interesting. But basically what I wanted to say in this video is that, okay, there's martial arts and there's movement speed. And that's it. Everything else for monk pretty much works in armor. So should you put armor on your monk? And the answer is surprisingly, maybe. Maybe you should. And I think it's up to me to make sure my next video explores that opportunity, and I will.
and we'll see how well it works. The, the, the thing is, is I don't think putting armor on a monk makes monks good. I think monks are weak. But the, the real question is, does it make them any better? Because you wouldn't think so. I'm starting to think it might. So let's take a look at that in my next video. Otherwise, until next time, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.